For more than 100 years, many feel it's been America's most famous speedway. Not a man-made track or race course, but a part of nature. The famous Bonneville Salt Flats. The salt that stretches for miles and miles in northwest Utah makes the place look like a different planet. One that is uniquely suited to making vehicles go very, very fast. Some of the most cherished land speed records in the world have been targeted and broken since they started racing at Bonneville before World War I. But today the salt that is essential to racing is going away and a bitter debate is raging over how that should be handled. We arrived at the flats before dawn. The peace at Sunday sunrise, a stark contrast to the blast of adrenaline that followed. Busy, loud, ridiculously fast. And final mile was 247.303. Amateur racers and their families have been coming to the Bonneville Speedway for generations. This is your dad's fire suit. Yeah, it's a little big, can you tell? <laughs> it works. <laughs> Including Olivia Nish, just 19. What is it about racing for you and he racing here? It's a rush. It's godly, to be honest. And it's family. Yeah. They race trucks, motorcycles, streamliners, and more sometimes at speeds of more than 500 miles an hour. The racing here began in 1912, but really picked up in the 1930s with the rise of hot rods, modified Model Ts and their successors. Ab Jenkins, the so-called father of the Bonneville Salt Flats, held more records than any other sports driver in the world. And here comes Ab Jenkins, the Mormon meteor. Down goes the flag and this great speed run is underway. Simple vehicles amped up by greasers to hit knee knocking speeds. Racing works here because thousands of years ago, a body of water the size of Lake Michigan evaporated, boxed in by surrounding mountains. The salt that was left behind, moist and cool, allows tires to grip and not overheat. But the salt at Bonneville is changing. I tell people, anytime you want to know what it feels like to go to another planet, you go to the Bonneville Salt Flats. Dennis Sullivan is president of the Utah Salt Flats Racing Association. I don't think that the general public realizes that this place is being taken away. And I'm going to use the word raping of the Bonneville Salt Flats. You think the Bonneville Salt Flats are being raped? I think they are. That's a hell of a strong word to use. Who do you think is responsible? We blame the people that gave the leases. We think they were so poorly done that it took all the salt away. You're blaming the government. I'm blaming the BLM. The Bureau of Land Management oversees the salt flats for the federal government. More than 50 years ago, they made deals with mining companies who use this land to get potash, a fertilizer. The process requires separating out the salt from the potash. But the Racing Association says the leases don't require putting the leftover salt back. Kevin Oliver is the Utah West manager for the BLM. Dennis Sullivan says the BLM, and I quote, is allowing the land to be raped. You know, that's his quote. He owns it. He can speak to that. What do you think when you hear that? I don't think much. I think I know that we don't allow the land to be raped. That's what I know. The Racing Association says the top layer of salt was once four feet thick and is now in most places down to one inch. The BLM, for their part, acknowledges a 7% decrease of the crust package over the last decade and a half. Is there a solution here that makes everyone happy? I mean, I think that's what they're working towards right now. You know? Brenda Bowen is a scientist who's been studying the salt flats. What has your work shown so far is happening here? Our work has shown that over the last 30 years or so, the footprints or the 2D surface of salt that's here in this landscape has been decreasing. Bowen showed us the current state of the terrain. By the way, it is nothing more than what's on your dinner table. This is like table salt. This, like yeah, yeah, taste it. Yeah, salt. Salt. Just millions and millions of shakers stretched out over a changing landscape. Less of it on the speedway. The racing community says all that salt has ended up here, up to 250 million tons of it, just a couple thousand feet away from the tracks, remnants from all that mining. And they want $50 million 
to put it back. When I first came out here, you never saw any bumps. It was flat like a billiard table. Louise Noeth is a longtime automotive journalist who is now spokesperson for Save the Salt, a nonprofit group that wants the speedway replenished. She's also a former racer, which makes her mission personal. Why should we pay for this to fix it? Because America was built on hopes and dreams. And they're killing the dreams. That's how rooted, how deep it is. It is. And how meaningful these are it is. ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Every one of these is hand built. Every every expression. I'm going to have the fastest air cooled VW. I'm going to have the fastest Chevrolet. I'm going to have the fastest hot rod in the world. While all of this runs its course, Brenda Bowen's work continues. You believe it's a combination of factors that leads to less salt on the track. Yes. Those factors include what? The mining and extraction that's been going on for about 100 years. It also includes changes in environmental conditions and then also land use and how we're manipulating the landscape, you know, with roads going through and the racers on the surface. We reached out to the mining company Intrepid Potash. They declined our request for an on-camera interview, but said they're now voluntarily returning hundreds of thousands of tons of salt every year. The Racing Association says it's not enough. They also told us they believe any effect the racers are having on the salt is negligible in comparison. What should happen here? I would say leave it alone for a few years. Don't come out here. Don't drive on it when it's wet. Give it a minute and let's see where it gets to. You know that's a non-starter. <laughs> no pun intended for the racing community. I mean, it's not a racetrack in a you know, warehouse. It's not an indoor environment. It's nature. Olivia Nish, the first female driver in her family's three generations of racing at Bonneville, hit 155 miles an hour on her first run the weekend we visited before spinning out while attempting to hit 180 on run number two. She plans to be back for many, many more. It is disappointing to see, but we just make the best of what we have and drive, right? Because <laughs> you want but, the next generation to drive, right? Yeah, right. And that's what I'm hoping, because we were talking about that earlier, is if it would stay here for a long time. I think it will, but it's been here for thousands of years. Why not a thousand more? Brenda Bowen, the scientist we talked to, has a, is in a very difficult position. Yeah. It's a difficult job. She's trying to navigate between the racers, the miners, and the government, all of whom have different interests in all this. Right. Nowhere else in the U.S. where they can race like that. Bolivia and Australia internationally, but nowhere else in the U.S. can you find a place like the Bonneville Salt Flats. But, but do the racers acknowledge the wear and tear on the salt flats? I, I think that they would say that any effect that they may have um, is negligible in comparison to what they think mining and other things do. Great story.